Should you buy a sawmill that's fully manual to save money or spend that extra cash and get one that's equipped with hydraulics? The real question is, how much money do you want to make? How many logs do you want to mill up? How much do you care about your back? And how much time do you plan on devoting to being a sawmill owner? Because man, I can tell you from experience, it's addicting and once you get started, it may just take over your life. I personally use a sawmill that's both fully manual, my Woodland Mills HM126, this thing cost me less than $4,000. And at my day job, I run a Woodmiser LT40 fully hydraulic, and these things start at $36,000. In my opinion, both of these machines are awesome, but they're very different machines designed for very different purposes and people. When I bought my Woodland Mills sawmill, I'd never run a sawmill before. I didn't have that much money, and I honestly didn't really even have any clue what it was gonna take to load a log, yet alone mill one up and figure out what to do with all the beautiful wood. This Woodland Mills HM126 can cut up to a 26 inch diameter log. And with the track extension that I bought, you can cut up to 16 and a half feet long. The LT40 by Woodmiser that I work with, that thing can cut up to a 36 inch diameter log and up to 21 feet long. On top of that, it's on a trailer, so it's portable and it's fully hydraulic. The hydraulics on this thing are crazy. It's got a loader on it that can load a 4,400 pound log. It can turn the log, lift either end of the log with tow boards. The clamp is all hydraulic. And it's got electric motors to run the saw head back and forth and up and down. It makes quick work. Whereas my sawmill, the Woodland Mill sawmill, it's all fully manual. I have to place the log on the mill using a tractor or whatever equipment I have. I use a cant hook to turn the log. I have to manipulate everything by hand including pushing the sawmill and cranking it up and down. It's not a big deal, but the larger the log gets, the more the difference in the two mills becomes apparent. And that's not the only way these things are very different. To give you an example, the other day we took the Woodmiser mill to someone's property and I cut over a dozen large oak logs and it was a lot of work, but with that mill, it really wasn't that big a deal. If I would have tried to do that with my mill, it would have taken me at least two days of full-time work and I would have been completely shot, completely exhausted. The time difference and the effort was very apparent running that Woodmiser saw. Now that being said, this video isn't about comparing the LT40 with the HM126 because these two saws are not really compatible. They're completely different saws. In fact, Woodmiser makes a saw that's very comparable to the Woodland Mills that I have. Every manufacturer has different models and you could have head-to-head -head comparisons of certain ones of those. The point of this video is to show you that there is a very large difference between the different kinds of sawmills that matter depending on what you're trying to do. And the first example I just gave you is really about production sawing. People give you an order and then you complete that order. And so that saw has to be fast and efficient. Otherwise, if you're charging per hour or board foot, one of you is losing money. I'm not saying you can't get the job done with the Woodland Mills, it definitely can, but it's gonna cut into your cost. So then why would you wanna buy the Woodland Mills if I just told you it's not a production saw? When I bought mine, I wanted to do a few things. First, I wanted to learn how to run a sawmill. I'd never done it before, so it was a brand new thing. But on top of that, we've got a 40 acre timber lot here. It was just logged. They left behind a bunch of logs that they didn't want. So I was like, man, this is all this beautiful wood that I could mill up and use for my own projects or sell the lumber or whatever. On top of that, this 40 acres, we've got all these dead ash trees. So I thought, wow, what a better way to utilize all this stuff while being outside, enjoying myself, than get a sawmill. That sawmill is completely capable of all that. And I love running the sawmill. And so what I learned is, first of all, there's a few ways that you can make money with a sawmill. Cutting for people, that's a service. The next way you can make money with a sawmill is someone comes up to you and they say, I want an order of one by 12 inch white pine logs, 10 foot long. So you get the logs or cut a tree down, whatever you gotta do, mill it up, and then you charge them for that lumber. Because you're providing the wood, now you're charging a lot more per board foot. Of course, that's green wood. So that takes me to the next one, which is you mill lumber, you dry it properly, and then you sell it as premium wood. It can be hardwood, softwood, whatever. Now you gotta go out and sell the wood. On top of that, another way to make money is to mill your own wood for your own use as a carpenter. So you mill the wood, you dry it, and then you make tables or whatever, and then you sell the product to the end user. 
or you do a little bit of all those things. The guy I work for actually, we do the production sawing, he also sells wood and he's a carpenter. And that's kind of where the woodland mill saw really shines is the carpenter side or the hobbyist. You've got wood accessible, you wanna turn it into something so you can mill it yourself, then you've got all your own stock and then you turn that into something else and sell it. Or you just love cutting wood and making things. The cool thing about the sawmill world is you've got the cheap low end stuff, they're all manual, all the way up to factory production style stuff, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars and everything in between. So you can find something that you like and trust me, once you get into it, it's awesome, I love it. And the best thing is these things hold their value. So if you decide you don't like it, turn around and sell it right back. So the real question is, which sawmill are you gonna get? Or which one do you already have? Let me know in the comments. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.